Hello friends, welcome again to yet another session on Gems of Geometry. In the previous sessions, we have uh, discussed so many beautiful concepts and theorems and properties of circles, pedal triangles, uh, coaxial circles, radical axis and many more. So continuing with the trend, we are now going to discuss one, uh, one more very popular uh, concept uh, related to triangles and uh, circumcircles. And that's called Simpson's line. So it's very famous. Uh, Simpson's lines is, uh, you know, uh, has been uh, very popular. Uh, but as a matter of fact, it was first this particular line, which is now called as Simpson line, and which we'll be discuss anyways, uh, was first discovered by a person called William Wallace in 1797. Right. So that's another fact that you know we have to just find out why it is called Simpson's line. Okay, Simpson's line. And as I told you, it was discovered in 1797. Wow, 1797 is like almost uh, 225 years now. So Simpson's line, 1797, but actually discovered by a person called William Wallace. Actually, Simpson is this person who has done a lot of uh, work in number theory, mathematics, geometry and other fields as well. And um, one of his famous contribution is uh, in Fibonacci series. So he found out how uh, nth term in a Fibonacci sequence can be, you know, uh, obtained using a relationship. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, we are, will be discussing Simpson's line and what exactly Simpson line we had, uh, we have just discussed in the previous session where we demonstrated using GeoGebra tool as to what exactly Simpson line means. So uh, let's discuss, let's, you know, first state the, you know, theorem and then uh, we'll try to prove it. So it says the feet of the perpendiculars from a point to the sides of a triangle are collinear if and only if the point lines on the circumcircle. Now this collinear points E, F, H form a line and that line is called Simpson's line. Okay. So, so what is the thing? So we have learned that in a given triangle if you, there is a point uh, which is also called a pedal point and you drop three perpendiculars onto the three sides and uh, you join the feet of the perpendiculars you will get something called a pedal triangle now this is a special case when the pedal point that is the point from which you drop the perpendicular lies on the circumcircle of the triangle right so you can see in this diagram d is the point uh, of uh, let's say abc is the triangle and you can see there is a circumcircle D is the point on the circumcircle and from D, DE, DF and DG are the three perpendiculars dropped onto the three sides. Okay. And now we have to prove that E, F, G are collinear, which is also called this line E, F, G is also called Simpson's line. Okay. So let's try to prove it. So here goes the proof. Okay. And we will be using concepts already learned so far and not very difficult concepts so to say to uh, prove this thing okay so first let's consider trying uh there's a you know a b d c so a b d c is a cyclic quadrilateral cyclic quadrilateral isn't it cyclic quadrilateral so so what does it mean? It means angle BDC, BDC is equal to 180 degrees minus angle A. Okay. So angle BDC, you can see angle BDC, which is angle BDC. This is angle BDC. So BDC is what? 180 degree minus angle A. Okay. Now, uh, if you consider quadrilateral, in quadrilateral quadrilateral which one e a g d e a g d e a g d right if you see angle e is equal to 90 degrees in that quadrilateral isn't it and angle d also is 90 degrees i'm sorry not angle d angle g angle g is 90 degrees that means i can say therefore 
एंगल ए प्लस एंगल बी सॉरी ई डी जी इज वन एटी डिग्रीज क्लियरली राइट वन एटी डिग्रीज वाई बिकॉज टू ऑपोजिट एंगल्स है सम ऑफ नाइंटी प्लस नाइंटी दैट इज वन एटी सो द अदर पेयर ऑफ ऑपोजिट एंगल्स शुड ऑल्सो भी सप्लीमेंट्री नो आई डिट मैंशन द रीजन बिहाइंड इट यू नो दिस रीजन वाई वट इज दिस रीजन दिस इज नथिंग बट इन अ साइक्लिक क्वार्टर लेटरल ऑपोजिट एंगल्स आर ऑपोजिट एंगल्स आर सप्लीमेंट्री सप्लीमेंट्री इन अ इन अ साइक्लिक This is the reason, right? So now it's clear. So angle A plus EDG is also one eighty degrees. So hence angle EDG, EDG is also one eighty degrees minus angle A. Clear. So from here, uh, these two things, we can say angle BDC is equal to angle EDG. Both are one eighty degree minus A. Now BDC, if you look carefully, is nothing but angle B. D G plus angle G D C angle G D C right and E D G if you see is equal to angle E D B plus angle B D G correct now if you see I can cancel this too so what do I get I get angle G D C Is equal to angle EDB. Let me highlight these two angles in the diagram. This angle we are talking about. This one, this one is equal to this one, and let's say both are equal to x, x. Fair enough, right? So far so good. So let's now proceed here, and let me just take away these things. Okay, now. If you see BFD, so if you see angle BFD is equal to ninety degrees, right? And and angle BED is also ninety degrees, correct? Therefore, we can say BEDF is a cyclic quadrilateral. Is a cyclic quadrilateral, right? The pair of uh, opposite sum of opposite angles is one eighty degrees. So hence, that particular quadrilateral will be a cyclic quadrilateral. If that is so, then angle EDB is equal to angle EFB, right? And both are equal to x. Once again, EDB, which is X, is equal to EFB. Why? This is nothing but angles in the same segment. Angles subtended, subtended by angles subtended by arc in the same segment. In the same segment are equal. Fair enough. That's clear. So hence, this angle is X. Correct, guys. Now, if you see again, um, I can say um, which two one. Yeah, so I can again take G F D C. Yes. So if you if you see, um, yeah. So angle D F C is equal to angle. D G C is equal to ninety degrees. Both are the are you know perpendicular dropped from the point D. If you see, so D F C is equal to D G C. Both are ninety degrees. So what I'm talking about is this: that this angle is ninety, and this angle is also ninety, right? So what does this mean? This means again D F G C and G N C are are Uh, either they form a what do you say the cyclic quadrilateral or we can say D F G and C are concyclic points, concyclic points. Okay, uh, why? Because uh, you know concyclic points with uh, let's say D C is the diameter. D C is the diameter of that circle, right? And you know that a diameter subtends ninety degrees at uh, two points in any any point of the circle. So D C is the diameter of that circle, 
okay therefore again if they are concyclic i can say angle gdc which is x is equal to gfc is equal to x both are x right what do i mean if this angle is x so this angle has to be x so if you now look closely in the diagram what do i see i see that angle efb is equal to angle g f c and both are equal to x degrees correct and and b c b f c b f and c b f and c b f and c are collinear collinear right so the uh, so one side is collinear that that were automatically automatically if there are x both are equal to x therefore what do we know then e f h or e f e f g must be collinear must be collinear why simple logic b c is the straight line and uh, f is a point on it and there are two angles which are equal with uh, f b and f c as one of the arms and the angle is such that the other arm are on the opposite sides of the two parts of bc so definitely e f n h are e f g sorry are collinear what do i mean i'll explain once again so let's say there is a straight line okay this is a straight line and here is a point so this point is my b this point is c and this point was f now we have two points on the on either sides of bc such that this angle is x and this angle is also x that means this is acting as vertically opposite angles right only vertically opposite angles could be equal like that that means when is vertically opposite angles possible that means the other let's say this was e and this was g so efg are also collinear or eg efg fall on a same straight line correct so hence we we could prove that E F G are collinear. Now this line E G is called Simpson's line. Simpson's line. This is what is the. This is what is the proof. Correct. So if you also look at it in this way, that uh, if D was anywhere else but on the circumcircle. then there the pedal triangle formed by the the three feet that is triangle efg would have been non zero but the moment d falls on the circum circle the area of that triangle becomes uh zero right so we say that in this case pedal triangle is degenerate d generate okay so if see degenerate pedal triangle is there okay that's what is this proof all about i hope you understood the the definition or the description of the simpson's line and its proof